Hello and welcome to the second of these tutorial videos. Um, now last time we looked at a riff called Smoke on the Water. Now this time we're going to look at some chords. Now chords are really important as they are normally what the basis of most songs are. Now what I always start off with is the four kind of fundamental chords that you need to know. They're either in virtually every single pop song that you hear on the radio or a, a variation of them. Now these chords are G, they are E minor, they are C, and it is and D. Now before I show you how to play them, let's just remind ourselves of different things on the guitar. Now, remember the bottom finished string is string number one, the next string up is string number two, the third finished string is three, four, five, and the thickest string is string six. Now we are actually going to be using all six strings today. And also, as well, more importantly, we are going to be using these frets. Now the frets go along, fret one is that one, two, three, four, five. We're not going any further than fret five today. Right, so the first chord that we're going to look at is the chord of G. This, I'd probably say, is the most important of the four chords. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to get your first finger, your index finger. And what you're going to do is you're going to go around, and you're going to count up five. It's almost like snakes and ladders a bit. You're going to go across two, to the second fret, and then count five. So one, two, three, four, five. So it's the string just underneath the thickest one, the fifth string, fret number two. Then you're going to get your middle finger, and it's going to go above it, up to string number six, fret number three. So the next fret along. And then finally, you're going to get your third finger, and put it on string number one, fret number three. Now the song I've come up with to help us play along with this features a pattern. And I'll show you that pattern. It's the same on each chord. So what you're going to do, once you've got your G chord pressed down, is you're going to strum all six strings and you're going to strum it five times. You're going to go one, two, three, four, five, and then stop. Now after you've stopped, you're going to count three counts straight away. You're going to go one, two, three, and then you do it again. You go G, two, three, four, five. Once you've done that, you go to the second chord, which is the E minor. Now it's a little bit similar to the G chord. So, what you're going to do this time is you're going to go across two again on the bottom string and then count five again. One, two, three, four, five. So again, you start on string number five, fret number two. Then your middle finger, instead of going above like we did on the G, it's going to go underneath onto string number four, fret two. Now, a lot of people will do that and put it on the third fret. If you do that, it'll sound like this, which isn't very nice. So you've got to try and squeeze them, you've got quite a bit of space there, onto the second fret on the fourth string. And again, you play all six strings. It should sound like that. And this time, again, like the previous one, you're going to play it five times in the song. You're going to go one, two, three, four, five, and again you stop, two, three, four, and then you do it five times again. Two, three. Right, so the third chord you're going to do is the chord of C. Now, this is the trickiest, I would say, of the four chords we're learning today. And basically, it is because you have to stretch. Now, I call this the staircase chord because it looks like a staircase, basically. So this is where your fingers go. Now, last time we've been going to the second fret, but this time we start on the second string, fret number one. All right, so the second one up on this very first fret. Then your middle finger goes above that. You're going to go to the string number four, fret number two. So, so far, you've got string number two, fret number one, string four, fret two, and string five, fret three is where your third finger goes. So I'll repeat them. String two, fret one, string four, fret two, and string five, fret three. So if you look at my fingers, 
looks like a kind of staircase. Now, another important thing with this C chord is you don't strum all six strings. If you do, it sounds like that. Kind of, some people do, like, personally, I don't. So with this one, you actually strum from the fifth string down. If you're not sure where the fifth string is, you start at the bottom, one, two, three, four, five, and then you strum down. So in the song that I have included, again, you strum this C chord five times, then wait three, and then strum it five times again. So I'll play that for you, it goes one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. And the final chord of the four is the chord of D. Now, the D chord, I call this the triangle chord because your fingers kind of look like an upside down triangle. So what you're going to do, firstly, you get your first finger and again, you count to the second fret and you go up three this time. So you go one, two, three. So the third string at the second fret. Then your second finger goes to the bottom onto string number one, fret number two. So far, we've got string three, fret two, and string one, fret two. Your third finger finishes the triangle by going on string number two, fret three. Again, can you see I've got a dot on that third fret? That might help you out. And that's it. So to repeat that, string three, fret two, string one, fret two, and string two, three and you've got this kind of upside down triangle now as we've talked about with the C chord you don't strum all six strings you actually only strum the bottom four so you count one two three four from the bottom and you strum like that if you strum all six which a lot of people do it'll sound like this again not very nice so you string or you strum even the bottom four strings. So in the song, you again, you strum it five times, wait for three, and then strum it five times again. So I'll show you. So it goes one, two, three, four, five, and then pause, one, two, three, and then one, two, three, four, five. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the song that I have come up with to help us change between those chords. It features the G, features the E minor, the C, and the D. So, it has four clicks, and then we're straight in on the G chord. So this is what it sounds like. So now, let's break it down. I'm going to show you the easiest way to connect the chords together. So what we're going to do with this is I'm not going to play it all the way through. I'm going to break it down into chunks to make it nice and easy for you. The first two chords are G and E minor. So, if you need to remind yourself what a G chord is, either rewind the video, go back to the G chord, or look at the sheet that I've given you, which shows you where your fingers go. So the first chord, the G chord, you put your fingers down and what you're going to do, like I've said before, is you're going to do five Gs, pause for three counts, five Gs again, and then pause for three counts. 
So it goes one, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, then G, two, three, four, five, two, three, four. Once you've done that, you change to the E minor, which goes one, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, two, three, four. Now, a little easy way to help you with connecting the two is if I go to the G chord, that first finger that is on the fifth string there is already in the right place for the E minor. So all you'll do, you do your five strums. Three, four, five, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. You'll then take these two fingers off, and that middle finger goes from up here, underneath that fourth string, and then you go one, two, three, four, five, two, three, four. Four. So what I want you to do first, before you carry on to the next section of the video, is to practice doing this. You're going to go G, E minor, one, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, E minor, two, three, four, five, two, three, four. So I want you to practice moving from G to E minor before you carry on to the next bit. <laughs> So I'm presuming that you are confident playing G to E minor now. So what I would like you to do now is we're going to do the next section, which is C to D. This is a bit trickier. So you go to your C chord. Again, if you've forgotten where the C chord is, either rewind back to the C chord or have a look at the sheet. And then we're going to try the C to the D section. So first bit starts on C. You're going to do five Cs. It goes one, two. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. Then you change to the D chord. Ah, D, two, three, four, five, two, three, four. D, two, three, four, five, two, three, four. And then the last chord you actually play is a G. So when you're practicing C to D. Unlike G to E minor, there's no actual fingers that are pressed down already, ready for the chord. However, the easiest way to think about it is I always think where my first finger is going. Because normally, if you get that finger down, the other ones kind of follow. So, for the C chord, my first finger is on string number two, fret number one. When I go to the D chord, it goes from there to string number three, fret two. So I, it's basically going up and across. All right, so it goes from string two fret one to the D chord. And then when you go to the G chord at the end, after you've done the two bits of D, that first finger jumps up two strings and then you do the G chord. So once you've got that C to D chord change nailed, then move on to the next section. <laughs> So if I put them all together, without the music for now, um, this is what it sounds like. We're starting on the G, so it goes G, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, G, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, E minor, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, E minor. C, two, three, four, five, two, three, four. C, two, three, four, five, two, three, four. D, two, three, four, five, two, three, four. D, two, three, four, five, two, three, and then G. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play the whole thing with the backing track. Now the backing track is it's not fast but you will need to practice moving between those four chords 
and have them pretty confidently down before you even try doing it with the backing track because you'll play the first chord and then before you know it you're on to the second chord so you need to get really confident knowing exactly where each chord is and once you've done that then move on to this backing track right we're going to try it with the uh, backing track now so uh, there are four clicks it'll go one two three four and then we're in with the very first chord of G so this is what it sounds like with the track three four three. Right, so that's the song. Uh, what I have included, as before, I've included the backing track that you heard me playing along to just then. I've included the music, sort of sheet music, which is, tells you how to play each chord and also the pattern that I've talked about in the video. Uh, so like I've said, slowly, slowly, this is a bit trickier than Smoke on the Water, so it will take you maybe a week or two to nail each chord. But these chords are really important for learning the guitar. Like I said, they're the foundation chords. They are in every single song. I could probably name you about 10 or 11 songs that have these four chords in that order that you will have heard of. So as before, once you've nailed it, what you could have a go at doing is recording yourself playing it on your phone, iPad, whatever you've got at home, and maybe send it back into school so they could see uh, you having a go at it. So uh, enjoy, and I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>